to be good. This is where it begins for Evil Geniuses versus the Mouse Sports right here in Unsa. We are in the quarterfinals and we are ready to kick this one off in a big way with Henry G and Machine. Absolutely true, Alex. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. Quarterfinals, EG versus Mouse Sports. Let's get some noise going. Let's get some energy as Mouse Sports make their way in towards the pop dog here. It's going to be a fast approach towards outside. And here comes the split. The smokes are down and the bomb site is open. It's a way in. Not a single body drop, though. EG capable of the retake. Still utility on Tarek. Bomb in. Stan and Breezy will be arriving from pop dog. Chris already having somewhat of a duel with Serg, but the bomb's down. He's battling Ivy. This clock, it will rot fast. They're going for the totem drop, and they have been wrecked. Easy for Wopsic to deal with. Chris J still keeping stuck busy. They're running out of time here, Hank. That was a lovely approach there from EG. I've never seen it on a CD side to yeah. drop down like that, but it is going to be a five on three now. You are seeing lots of damage being inflicted towards the North Americans, and it's just poor old Ethan remains. It's absolutely perfect there from Mouse Sports. The outside execution, two smokes either side of the bomb site there. Two going down the pop dog, finding all the frags acquired. It was a nice reaction from EG there. Like I said, we haven't seen this before on a CT side. It was a nice idea, but well, they even staggered the boost. This incendiary fails, gives him an opening here. Oh, they're gonna be kept at bay. Similar from the crowd before, but this time they got rifles. Two for EG, as it does look like it will be an inner finish. Two members of EG holding fast and no issues for Cirque on the first. Chris J's gone. And chances dwindling for Mouse Sports in the fourth. First chance for EG to get a, a taste. No issues so far. Bombs on the back of Woxic. They will slow this right down. Just hope that they can catch someone off with, well, a maneuver just like this. A boost. Doesn't often pay dividends. No, it doesn't. But when it works out, it does look very good. At this stage, just trying to keep EG modest. Uh -oh. Any kills they can find would at least limit cash going forward. But so far, so good. That deadly flashbang towards Ivy seems to be very effective indeed. Mass Force are trying to bring some sort of fake towards that outside position. At that point, they had three players ready to go towards inside. But if both players go down, no bomb spotted, everyone's going to rotate towards in it. And so, especially, ready to deal with it. Only one player could commit. Now, Rocks and Voxic, with five seconds remaining, just going to hold on to their weapons. They've got the AWP, the AK, still have six thousand dollars residual cash on Rops. He'll get no extra for this round, but he's held on to the weapon, so that's absolutely fine. EG can't really justify a big manhunt right now, considering. Now, something the desk touched on, but it's worth reiterating as we venture into this first map and get our toes just dipping into train, we will reiterate that EG have not got the strong... We'll see Frozen and Chris J once again probing towards the IV position, but Breezy looks like he's got the perfect position, but he looks away for a split oh. second. That's Chris J cracking things open, the queue to make their way out, make their presence known as Carrigan. He'll get the second frag here. Just an absolute masterclass on the timings as Ethan will pull one back. He's still alive towards outside, but Chris J is coming in behind them. He gets the sniper, but Ethan still battling. He's so low, though. Should be finished off eventually. Yeah, frozen from the backtracks. Stan thrown into a one versus three. Carrigan staring at him. He has to be really clean on this first, and he is. Doesn't lose a single point of health. What's the play now? He's going to try and... Suggest he's going back up the ladder, nothing's going to work out for him. What's it handle? It's a leisurely and very silent stroll. And it was so unfortunate there for Breeze. The fact he had. Folks are going to start to arrive. Will it be the double pump? Doesn't look like Chris is going to go off this. Now towards five, does have that vision obscured. A couple of bullets into the smoke, but nothing going to be connecting too much. And now Frozen continuing his advance. This has always been somewhat of a duel. It's Breezy and Frozen. The flash, it's always catching Frozen, but this time he finds solace in the corner. Breezy knows he's coming, deals with it. First blood drawn 3G. They needed that. But advantage, it's short-lived. Chris J into the site. Carrigan's already on the bomb, and suck. He takes the bomb out of the grasp of the in-game leader, Tarek from heaven. Does find another as he descends, he gets it. Wow, 10 points of health, but that's a huge frag. All onto Rops then. One versus four. His teammates have got some low, and that one is a freebie. Ethan puts his head into the crosshairs. Now looking for the one versus three. Two tagged, it's a possibility. Tarek is still up heaven. I wonder if he's aware of it. With nine seconds, he still has to get that bomb down. No chance. Well handled, and EG, they weather the storm and will take some nice weapon upgrades into the next. It was looking very dicey for a second there for EG. From Breezy thought he could actually take him down there, but well recovered and very well held from Cirque there towards the connector. It was Tarek with the lesser of the rifles there. The FAMAS up in heaven has to drop down, take some damage for it, but a clinical shot towards the Ivy area will yield the round. It's going to be four to two into round number seven here. They're 4-2 up, they can afford to do so. So just a little bit with some deagles and Woo! a great shot from Boxic. That's towards the connector. Tarek boosts it up, taken down with a flashbang from Chris J as well. It's gonna be a probe towards the side alley position here. That's Breezy, he'll oh, actually be taken dear. down. Carrigan's waiting with the P250. That's two quick frags now. And they've still got one minute 25 on the clock. Can they recover the weaponry and really punish this moment? 
There's a little bit of Kevlar, smattering of it on two members of Mao, and Zerk will take Carrigan out of his venture to pick up that weapon. So one rifle will not be retrieved, the other deep in towards Connector, so neither will benefit Mao Sports at this juncture. For now, though, Stan, ooh, that Molotov arrives just in the nick of time. Woxic will be setting sights towards the heaven, but he's not acknowledging Stan, jumping for info, lovely play from him, doing so safely, and now he can take the fight. Yeah, that was actually really well played, especially against the scout up there as well. He scoped in, he had no idea that Stannis will actually spotted him. He can take an educated guess, he went up a helmet, so swings out, takes him down and brings it back to a three on three. Crisis averted, at least for now. 45 seconds remaining and they've got no grenades on the T side. They've got a scout, a deagle and a Glock. Chris J with Kevlar, interesting enough, with just that weapon. He's going to go upgrade his pistol, I'd imagine, towards this Ivy position. If he grabbed the FAMAS, that would be fantastic. That's the M4. 30 seconds now, looking for... A rotation. If Chris J can get one kill here, his yeah. teammates might be able to capitalize upon it. This is a real chance. Look how much ground he's covering. Ethan, a complete gap and it's exploited. Now they start to flood into the site. Chris J, he can keep them under lock and key now, sir. He's going to have to be paranoid. He knows Chris is around the corner. Bomb can go down. Frozen will be the one to make that happen. Sir can stand. Kits. Weapon advantage, but now Mouseport, they can dig their heels in and Chris J, he's not done. Oh. <laughs> Another player added to his tally. Just stand though. And Mouse Sports with two Kevlar vests, a couple of pistols. They got it all at the jumble sale, but it pays off. Beg that from Vox here, but then the P250 kill from Carrigan as well. It was a nice reaction from EG there, knowing they'd lost a bit of control towards outside. Tried to regain that by pushing with the flashbang as well, but it wasn't quite effective enough. Carrigan, close range, the flash goes behind him. At that point, he picks up the first and second kill, and in that stage, Chris J. He had to pull things right back there, Alex. He somehow, some way, got the M4, wiggled through, got to the bomb site, and causes absolute chaos there. Recovers the AWP as well. That's a massive round for Mouseports to pick up. Okay, hindsight, 2020. Well, Frozen has committed with the smoke and the Molotov. It's the same procedure, and that's the cue for them to go towards inside. Breezy, such a difficult position to play here. They know exactly where he is. He's stuck in the open, and Boxing will punish him for it. This is looking like a lovely round from Mouseports here. Will the bomb get planted quickly? They've got a four versus three situation. We're Voxic as the bodyguard, making sure no CTs can rotate, but he has to plant the bomb. And there it is, the backstab from oh. Frozen coming in eventually. Yeah. This is massive. Voxic, he didn't have to get too nervous with that bomb on his back. He's continued to hold the lines because there's a timer on Frozen. He's pushing with his knife out. Tarek has his pants around his ankles, as does Zerk. Easy for Frozen. And the another round secured for Mouse. You, you absolutely nailed it, Henry. Timeout called by your opponent. Complete exactly. change up from Mouse. Yeah, that's perfect as well. They had the, the, the same sort of approach as well with Frozen going towards Ivy. The same utility right. drop. They had a couple of flashes to start towards outside, holding them at bay. Frozen, they've been so active towards that side of the map. He just wanted to show the same sort of presence. And as soon as he did, as soon as he was spotted, that's when they go towards inside. And we saw Breezy's position there. Sure, it was good for one frag, but as soon as he gets one kill, they're going to communicate. He's in the open. He's got nowhere to fall back to, and he couldn't hold on. The smokes are too powerful there. They stifle the bombsite and the rotations by pushing down for... But there's not much money at all here. We're well, averaging about three thousand dollars. And Vox are getting the key frag from up top, and then frozen. We we're waiting for this backstab to come through. They had no idea this was coming. As Sir, he tried to come back. He tried to get the quick scope going, but frozen. He's looking very, very sharp right now, enjoying his play. As we get into another partial buy here, you can feel things are starting to fall apart here. Losing eight two on the CT side of train really is far from ideal. Especially on your opponent's pick here. Except he served to open things up though. A quick approach from Carrigan, trying to make his way to main entrance. He is punished for that. Early five on fours, Chris J. Active once again towards Ivy. Trying to make his way through, but this time Breezy contains him. Handling an EG, they've got the biggest advantage they've had so far this half. It comes in round 11. Two early frags. Now sports. Likely going to continue to investigate. So much time on the clock, see if that aggressive EG that we've been talking about does show their head. Mismanaged aggression, that is. You can't have that luxury, especially with Stan on that AWP, just to leave him solo on that ramp. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Yeah. He'll either be towards lower or upper. If he can get full control by himself there, means he can have four players towards outside, and he nails another kill here. Five versus two. At this point, looking to inflict damage financially, if possible, frozen. He'll be making his way towards outside. Krieg in hand at this point. Woxig with him. They've got Molotovs and flashes, so really just a contact play here, hoping to catch someone out, but it will be Breeze. Bringing okay. it back to a five and one. Yeah, now Woxig, I mean, same story. One less teammate with him. Breezy was holding such a lovely passive line. Frozen just moonwalking into it. Oh, that's a freebie, but he continues to push in. It was held by Ethan. 
And so it will be a flawless round from Evil Geniuses. They needed that and they need more. Lose at opening pick, it seems like the floodgates open very, very quickly indeed. And Mouse Sports are actually going together with a couple of flashbangs and not telegraph their approach here. And we have got a push from the CT side. That's served towards Ivy. Here come the smokes. Final commitment now. You can see that vision just desperate for Breeze. Sprays through. No real damage done. And they've got full control of inside here. Yeah, they wait for that mag to be opted for. Get the fresh reload. And that's when they push from behind. Ethan only going to get the first. A four versus four post plant. Smoke still distributed all over the site. Frozen's going to try and push up as best he can. He's a bit of a lone wolf there, but support towards the bomb site. Nade indicates Zerk position and a missed shot from Woxic. See if he can exploit that gap again. Freezy continuing to be the stealthy ninja he is. We'll catch the overextended Frozen. Zerk onto one. Carrigan pulls one back. It had to be two. And now Rops looking for a one versus three. He's crawling. Will find the first frag, but stands so precise. And he secures the round, I think. It's a long run. There is gonna be a kit on Stan. He's trying to find it. They've in the smoke. No, it's gone wrong. Oh, oh the that's... smoke. The smoke. He couldn't get the straight. Just in time. <laughs> his perception just enough discombobulated. It was down to the last second. He had a shot at it. Oh, that's gonna be a gut punch. Flame keeps them at bay and a nade as well. Flash in return though, sir. Vision's oh, completely good. caught. He doesn't move a muscle. And Chris J, he moves just one on his finger. One bullet, one kill. Sirk gone. Stan will try and flash up, but Frozen, he's already managed to push up. There's two there. And with a Mac 10, he can at least keep them at bay a little longer. The flame will force him forwards. He gets one before going down. Oh, it's all going down here. Oh, it's going to no. be Carrigan and Voxic pushing down another inside execution. We'll find mouse pods. Ten rounds on the board here. It looked unlikely with the buy, but my good. And this gracious man had to fall right back and try and recover here, but this was the moment I didn't quite understand. Fully flashed off at this range, like you either pull the trigger and fall back, or you just fall back. He stood there in the open, blind, almost offering himself up there. Yeah, that's a strange death. I mean, I understand it sometimes. You know, when the first flash comes in, they stand their ground, they pull the trigger after a exactly. second. But he didn't even. It sort of looked like both of his hands were off the mouse and keyboard. Good nades. Will chimp chunk Tarek down to 39. Circle will be playing aggressive in brown holes, so. No more of that funny business. Woxic, in the meantime, has drawn first blood. Breezy, he has been such a pillar on Ivy, but he's been taken down early, and Rops, he's always getting the timing from Palm 2. Quick succession. And just those orcs remain. They're such a powerful tool for the defense, but not in circumstances like this. Oh, my stand. He's going to go down. He gave it a shot. A quite literal shot. Hit prior. 11 to 4. And it's up to EG now to win this pistol round as Frozen spots three towards Ivy. Oh. The bullets to the face. He's at the full back, but it's not in time. Carrigan now. He'll get the second frag in return. He's looking to battle back here, but it's overwhelming. It's Chris J. Can he find any more? Three versus two. EG might have done enough here, but Rob says no. With one HP from the Pop Dog, it's now gone down to an equal kill. It's going to be just a two on two. No kit available. Both players in the same position here. So I guess the info on the first, but still not confirmed that they're both coming from the same direction. No. With one HP. And with one bullet, Rops makes it an advantage mouse. Or is it? Because Breezy's position, we talked about this in the half before. It's so difficult to force this off. There's no kit. That's a 10 second defuse. If you're not getting the info early, what do you do? Do you put the low HP on it? You're probably going to want Rops to be the one punching in the defusal. Oh, not anymore. They know where he is, though. Woxic, what do you do with this information? What can you do with this information? He's looking for a line of sight. Breezy's playing it perfect. And a start for evil geniuses. You said they had to win the pistol, Hank. They need to do so much more kills there. It was actually down to Rops on one HP who kept them in the round delivering brutal headshots there. It looked like it might have been enough but as you mentioned with no kit there and the heaven position once again it was just too much of a tall order at that point and we are going to see the force fight in the second round looking to close things out early if possible it'll be four Desert Eagles an MP9 and some HE's delivered towards main entrance here. I don't think anyone's going to be there to receive them. Most of you. Yeah but I mean I don't know you've got to show the tats haven't you? Yeah well you are right there. Smoke towards the ramp. Four members are going to advance on that. That's their cue. Carrigan only with a deagle to contain, but Robses is working so well. Two and a half. Oh! And this by Chris J. Phenomenal. One to the belly button of Breezy. Three members with just pistols, but they're making it work. An MP9, admittedly, for Watsik, but Stan. He's got a shot at this. He has the time. He has the rifle. He has the health. And now he's got a shot on Chris J. Evaded nicely with the ladder. 
And from the side, it's Rock Six Pistols. No, excuse me, it's an MP9. I forgot about once. I forgot about it twice. <laughs> EG won't, though. That's if we look at the disparity in the approaches there, that was EG. It's pretty much straight. It's 1 minute 15 on the clock, and they've committed through a smoke with the advantage of the rifles. I, I couldn't tell you why. They haven't really got any control towards Ivy or outside. They haven't baited out utility. If anything, they're running for a gray screen with the rifles. That's what they gave, gave up. Chris J, very capable and looking like he's in fantastic form right now as well. It's 21 Four. kills. Four smokes just flew over the roof. Now they have to react. They're going to lose a lot of the ground they have already covered. Down to a three versus three. Ethan down to just nine, but his teammate Breezy healthy. He can do a lot of damage here. So can Ethan? No, not anymore. Frozen ensures of that. Crossing to the site is Breezy, sir. Not going to be able to find the bullets. Rob can. Oh, an EG. They throw a full execute, but Mouse Sports were ready. Breezy, only option now is to go towards inside. With Rops pushing towards the pop dog area, you can pretty much guarantee that position is going to be clear. He's being very slow in his approach. So yeah, he can pick things up. He needs to just get that bomb planted here. He's got a very slim chance of winning this with just a Galil. Rops now rotating in from the Brown Hall's position. He'll focus towards the lower ramp. They know it's an inside plant. Rops going towards up at where he does his best work. Breezy now has no grenades whatsoever. Holding towards the lower ramp, and I just don't know how he pulls this one off. But ever there was a player capable of doing so on the EG roster, this would be it. But unable to detect the flank, it is going to be 15 rounds on the board for Mouse Sports Alex. Just the six for EG after giving that round up. They've only managed to pick up a couple of rounds after winning the pistol. Won that second round force by came through, and it's led us to this disastrous scoreline. EG just haven't even able to get warmed up yet. I mean, yeah, the, the, the chances for EG to really put up some additional resistance here on our first map. They stem from that second round. Things start to slow down. Utility deployed it all, stacking the incendiaries as well. It's going to be Stannis on a lot of trouble there with just the HE coming towards him. It's still the bullets that beat it there. And now Boxic spots another couple of players towards Ivy. Smokes them off, just trying to buy some time. He'll get that smoke off eventually. There it is. Wow, twitchy. Let's get it out. Molotov's wow, exchange Carrigan. and Carrigan's on the perfect flank. Look at that aggression. He gets the same info that Tarek had in that first half, but look what he does with it. And actually uses it, right? And actually makes sure he gets a frag from that position. It's so vital. Push towards main entrance, especially after taking down Stannis Lord as well. You can guarantee that that position, it could be clear. As Carrigan now watches towards oh, the T spawn position. Oh, in. the smoke is beautiful. Just as they wanted to take that fight. That's the bomb delivery. Express shipping from Tarek. Could be the first for Ethan, but he's faced with a 1v5, 40 seconds. The CTs could be absolutely anywhere pushed up in halls, which is exactly where the first fight comes from. Chris J, he's done enough with that tag. Just going to finish it off, and so will Mouse. A spectacular start to the second quarter final here in Odense. Mouse Sports, the international roster, they mixed up their roster in pursuit of trophies. Well, that's a step towards... Back on track, Evil Geniuses, Mouse Sports, and Henry G in the machine. At this point as well, you've got five players on this side of the map. You have to commit. You can't even fall back. Smokes will come through, and they've got four CTs on the other side. Oh, he pulls the trigger. He held his ground, frozen. Eventually, patience prevails. Into the site they go, though. The smokes work, but how for how long? Chris J will manage to chip away at one. Carrigan around the smoke. A quick conclusion. Four-man stack. <laughs> patience from Mouse, and it works so damn well. Again, though, Alex, where's the default? Where's the map control? Where's the suggestion? There was nothing there. They didn't even probe middle. They went for apartments and straight back towards B. I'm not seeing much tactical depth here. If you're going to run those sort of executions, you have to take vision away from the CTs. You have to get them second-guessing. They had four players there. No one active at all towards B. And they just wait for the execution to come through, which it does. And it's having to wait as the smoke is still deployed. And here it comes. That one flashbang comes in. Carrigan rotates through. They need an opening pick here, but it's going to be Carrigan to find it as another woeful smoke towards CT spawn. That's going to provide so much vision, but still they get one kill. Is that going to be enough here? Breezy with a pre fire The bomb goes down. Ten seconds remain, and Carrigan, he knows he needs to stay alive here as long as he possibly can. Eight seconds on the clock. Will there be enough time to plant just about here? It will go down. Two versus two. They've got a fighting chance, but Chris J spraying them down. It's Rops now with a huge advantage. He's waiting towards CT spawn. He gets the opportunity, and he strikes upon it. It's going to be 3-0. They got it so close in that previous round. How does a professional Counter-Strike team miss that CT I don't smoke? know, Alex. It kills me when I see that. If you're just going to throw it as you go in, that's fine. But at least you've got to make sure it's dead on. At least, you, or at the very least, you have to go for the lineup Certainly. behind. But you're trying to go for that surprise approach, right? You're trying to uh, not telegraph to get back to executing towards B. They only had two smokes, one flash. Doesn't work out. Early adopters and strong with it. It's going to be the first to be tested as well. Aggressive from Ethan straight up and finds blood. 
It's always Ethan to bring those opening frags consistently. Up oh, banana, a spurt of aggression. Costly though, Stan and Cirque, they have 44 points of health between the two members of EG. Yeah, I believe Carrigan have no helmet there as well, so the Galil takes him down, no problem. Lots of damage inflicted there. Chris Lee down to two points of health. This is looking great for EG, they need to convert this one. Another opening kill. And five players making their way towards B. They've tried this execution so many times before. They get towards the bomb site, but they can't seal the deal. Moxic will be a little bit more aggressive in his approach this time. Trying to get towards the corner. Molotov's coming through. Needs to find the open here. Nails it, and he's got a chance to fall back. Oh, and get another. Breezy in the crosshairs. Won't find the third. Zerk ensures that. Into the site. Tarek hoping to find a freebie over the smoke, but Frozen not going to be giving him anything. The rotate will be coming in. Mouse Sports knives out. They need to get there as soon as they can. Close that gap. Stan tucked in on the corner. The Tarek is the only one with health. Yeah, he has to be very active here, and he knows it as well. That was a chance to hit on the low HP. Chris J, but he's in the open now. Will the swing come through ruins? Tarek, he knows he's in a dangerous position. If he goes down, the round could be over. There he is, and now it's up to just Stanislaw. 20 points of power. There's too much trade potential here. Another round goes in favor of Mouseports. The bomb is very close to going off. But Towards that mid-round, that 40, 30 second mark, he, they'll just hold that close line. You can see he did this so early into the piece. He goes and takes that first frag just before the flash pops. It couldn't be any better, could it? And he knew he was going to be swarmed upon at that point. If he got the third, that would have been so sick. It doesn't... Stan's going to be trying to throw out the initial smoke. And now here comes the push. Woxic falling off, thinking better of it. Flashes were following. Perhaps the right choice, but it's down to Rox, the first test, and EG pass. Looking for Woxic in the site, close quarters, handles the first, will be traded. And now advantage, only for a moment, because, oh, Carrigan, had he hit another bullet, could have stopped that plant. On the cross, at least one, it was Cirque. Yeah. But that should be the round, and you said that they've managed to keep Mouse Sports honest. Finally, EG can start. Yeah, and we saw what Mouse Sports could do uh, with their force in the previous map on train. Literally, EG a contributing factor. Perhaps hearing the steps though towards second middle. Breezy's already low, and oh, Chris J spots him, and another two as he escapes completely. Scar three, not for long though. Circle to find his tenth frag, and now towards B they go. A quick pick off. They have the advantage in more ways than one. Woxic, the only man standing on B, he has to find a quick one here and stands the one to pull the trigger first. Yeah, much better here from EG. You can see them reacting quite nicely, looking deadly as well. After Chris J's little push towards second middle, it looked like there would be enough there, but all loss bonuses coming in. Maybe Robs can do some damage with the AK-47. He's got a smoke and a couple of flashes as well. But EG, managing that well. Carrigan, we didn't see his death. Crowd here in Odin, sir, a shout out to you. You guys have been consistently keeping the decibels high. Throughout the first semi and deep now into the second, our second map. This is EG's pick and now they're starting to find their footing on it. Contact play towards middle. They know there's a chance there's an AWP on the other side, but a more defensive AWP box again. And just as that smoke, oh, it doesn't plume. Ethan, he was just a little too eager and it cost him his life. There's more where that came from. Tarek and Cirque will be advancing to Moxic. He's going to have to take a more passive hold. He knows library could have been conceded. And now the site has been. EG just walk on in. They're playing this so passive. There's two members still around the A site. Finally, they cut another one down. Zerk's been caught out, but not fragged. And caught out again. Stan, well handled. This should be their round now. This retake is going to be so difficult. Woxig would have to find an absolute blinder. Hitting all of their shots. Only one player going down. It's a really fantastic round there from EG. Like I said, six in a row now. Carrigan wants to stand his ground, he does not want to concede, an aid will tickle down Frozen, here comes the fight, Ethan, no success this time, Carrigan makes sure of that. Stan will hold the line for the cross back, but the smoke now arriving, he's just gonna reveal the line he was holding. Action elsewhere though, towards the balcony, Rops, he's got a real shot at this one, supporting Woxic as well, if he goes down, so could this whole defense for the first, Breezy does make his way out, now Woxic's in trouble, and Breezy, he's got them away in, Chris J could be the one to close the door though. Really impressive scenes there from Breezy. Those two high impact frags now looking for the seventh round in a row. He's towards the core position. This is the frag that pretty much decides the round. He gets a shadow advantage, what? but Chris J somehow comes out on top of the M4 there. Three on one now. They're going to break the spell. Stanislaw with 40 seconds remaining. He's towards the apartments here. He needs to sneak out and see if he can find Chris J. He knows he's close, but it won't be enough. It's going to be three players surviving. Three kills for Chris J. Same story for EG as well. They've got so much catch. They've had so many successful rounds. Tarek buying the AWP. He'll throw it over to Cirque. And now... Is he really going to take this fight again? It's Krieg versus Zorp. And precise as always. An 11th for Woxic and a crucial opener for Mouseports. 
It was Whoa! six in a row. And he's got two no! in a row. Four. Zach jumps into the jaws and what? Sick. He's so damn hungry here. He's had his dinner. And he's got the huddle. Five. It doesn't matter where they come from. Tarek couldn't do a thing, and what? Sick is a beast here in Odensa. Unbelievable scenes, Alex. It was a questionable pick towards the underpass position, but my God, does he ever deliver. <laughs> he knows exactly where they're coming from. Look at the shots coming through. This guy is one of the world's fastest snipers. Unbelievable. So good. And he knew the fifth was his as well. He turns around. He gets the intel. He's dropping out the apartments here. And look at him go. Another Whoa. amazing shot. And it could work out quite nicely. Carrigan's there behind the hay bales. Decent in center as well. They might try to get a boost up towards the canopy here. We'll see if that's going to come through. It is. Okay, I like this from Rob. That's a very nice move. What a reaction. And the Molly to ensure that they could do so safely. And you can see over that smoke now. But their plans will change. EG get that information safely. Chris J, he's going to fall foul to Cirque's hold. Lovely pick off. More utility invested towards the A sign. I say more. Two smokes, flashes, a Molly towards the pit. They're looking to segregate, separate, and there's not much the CTs can do unless he pushes through the smoke, Frozen. He wanted to bring the fight to them, but with 30 seconds, and now only two members left to defend, Rops has to do so much, and he can't do anything. Carrigan only the one, and EG, they look like they're going to be finishing this half with the lead, albeit by the smallest margin. Yeah, but they were 5-0 down, so they'll take that all day long on the T side of eight rounds. That's actually a very good outcome, showing the mental fortitude there, not crumbling at all in the second map after being devastated on train. It's gonna be a four versus one here, but just a formality, really nothing that Vossi can do. He's got 16 kills to his name, trying to pad some stats here, see if we can get another frag here, and it will be Sir to get the final kill of the first half. Best mouse sports and secure a spot in the semi-finals. Well, Rob's just flying up the apartments. And Tarek already catches the first, there's more where that came from. Hard to hit, the target so fast and frozen. Immediate to find just one. Not gonna be able to find Breezy immediately. But Robs, more than just good with the keyboard, good with the mouse as well. Bomb goes in. Kit on Ethan. Coming from three different avenues as well. There will not be some neat and tidy trades. Unless they coordinate and they start to do so. Ethan from library. He will have the support of Stan closing the gaps now. Tarek starting his arrival. His battle will be with Rops, and that's a perfect start. Doesn't look good now for Mouse Sports. A three versus two. Rops will have to find a few more headshots, but he's getting damage from all over. What is that? Down to 12 HP. A sensational shot comes through. The clock from doing a can of range. He doesn't hit the shot now. It looks like Rops will be done. That was the key frag. It was the Glock in the back for the bomb. It's too far gone. They've actually pulled this one off. There was no kid available. Tarek with three kills. It's not quite enough. And Rops with the shot from hell. Rops, his ridiculous reaction wins them the round. You're the kid right. drops in pit. I assumed they gathered it. It right? looked like Let's it was done. How did he hit that? Oh, and the kick goes loose. Now suddenly they have to push. He's done enough. Wopsik admittedly doesn't find the frag, but he keeps Tarek's attention. And the all bow Berserk here. He'll be towards top of middle, looking towards second. He's got a kill here. No problem at all. That's Christian going down. Didn't anticipate that swing. It's and such a ballsy move, down. man. That's so ballsy. Stan lands an aid on Carrigan. And so early into the piece, they have taken an advantage and they've run with it. Quite literally, as Ethan charges down banana seizes that advantage wow there's so much time left on the clock and there's so little members of mouse remaining rops is going to have a go at it quick adjustment into the head of breezy but this will not be easy Tarek, another fight another success chill ct side like you've got a massive advantage here i don't know why he's swinging out at that point now this is still possible to give up ethan should confirm things now bombs down in t spawn and it is well held towards the end but they were giving a few opportunities there towards mouse sports i'll find a couple of frags and we said the money oh will be towards banana as well trying to lock them in it's the mp9 the strikes first rops no trade available and it will be a two frag advantage here for eg i don't think they're going to be expecting stan element of surprise not enough frozen quick but breezy he should be able to find this one onto the tagged up frozen and even more back turn he finds the full hp Watsik. that's a bonus chris j out of apps though does give them access to the site bomb needs to be arriving any second now frozen through apps got his knife out hoping to get it in before that smoke fades but jumping in circle we had a chance a tiny one, a minuscule chance, but the bomb goes in. Two versus two for this retake now, EG. Do start to group up. The Molly doesn't quite go where it's intended to, and now the nade does do good damage. Chris J, however, he found a way in, and he wants to close this one out. Sir, through the smoke, it's all Chris.
doing great work with the MP9. It looked like it might be enough with the swing towards middle for Chris J. Once he gets towards Graveyard, the incendiary is down. As you mentioned, it wasn't perfectly thrown, but still a nuisance for them. They had to extinguish it, and Chris J could close things out there. 11-11, but money not broken at this point. A double orb setup coming in for Tarek and Sirk. Money. Molotov will hold them at bay. They have to commit to this. Yeah, there's still no info middle from the CTs, but they haven't stretched their legs further. Now here comes the push. Tarek flashed off, tucked into Coffins. If they win this duel, it's on Ethan. And only the one, it may not be enough. Mouse take the sight and likely the round. Yeah, I think that's it. There's no way you can even consider that retake there. Lovely work from Mouse Porter. Flashbang was very effective. We saw Tarek with the opportunity. Had he stayed towards Emo? Couple more rounds to make that dream a reality and to continue this unbeaten spree. This would be the third series the Mouse Bots have bested EG upon. Often housing the Estonian wonder child and now Carrigan finding a way in, leading by example. Gets the first frag on to beat. Tarek has to get more than one. Nice connection. Good spray control. Does take Frozen out of the round, but they're not committing necessarily to B. Look at the flank though. Karakin's positioned himself so beautifully to catch Tarek in transition. Oh, no! oh, that's brilliant. No way. Galaxy Brain strikes again, and now just two remain. That was actually kind of wild. Tarek, he had no business finding that kill. 20 HP, one bullet would have taken him down, but there's still a chance here as Rops will at least get control towards Ava Stanislaw. He's got a bit of an off angle. He's going to get the kill, no problem whatsoever. And now Voxic left in a three versus one. A miracle round there from EG. After the first pick towards B, it looked like they were done, but Tarek holds on. Holding the coffin's position, putting mouse boards inside. It will be 14 to 12 now. Three players surviving as well. Sirk keeps hold of the AWP. Who will have the upper hand coming into the last? Was that the aggression? Yeah. Wow, look at Tarek. He's even going to get himself towards logs, and in that smoke, he's completely obscured. I'm not sure Carrigan's going to be ready for this. Maybe, just maybe, he caught a glimpse. He did, and he can punish, or can he? Tarek oh, smooth no. moves onto the logs. He's mantled across and finally shut down. Advantage Mouse. And he oh! can Carrigan gives him the D in Denmark. My goodness gracious, it looked like Carrigan was struggling with that situation. He spots the kneecap and Tarek fumbles the spray, but he leaps up towards the logs there and finds a five on three. Sirk got his clock cleaned there, and we'll see whether Ethan can hold on. Tarek had to do it before, but they're waiting now, baiting out the utility. We didn't see if there's a smoke available. Ethan does have one, but is it enough? Defend off four terrorists waiting outside. Breezy will rotate over, leaving Stanislaw alone towards A. There's still a chance they can bring this one back. It's a high pressure scenario. Breezy will be there. They've read it well. So they have their resources in the right place, or at least whatever remains, but let's not forget that trap card. Rops. Not yet activated. 30 seconds, Alex. They've got a Yugi go. Garrigan straight in, and he's still going. Three, maybe not anticipating the push, it's what's it to catch him. Mouseport sees the 15th, and the spearhead of the assault is the esteemed in-game leader. Goes down here, which is a potential boxing right next to him. There's a chance that they lose everything, which they do. They're going to have $1,900 on Ethan. Oh, geez. Similar story for Breezy as well. They're going to have to call a tactical timeout here. Everything on the line. Circle bring out the AWP. UMP purchase for Breezy. It's all come crumbling down here. Okay, real talk, question time. Sir, you've been given the AWP, you know it's probably the best weapon you're going to be presenting into this, potentially, the last round of, of your time here in Odin, sir. Do you, do you really want to take the risk of going aggressive? I think you have to. We saw it before in this scenario. He didn't go for that at all. He yeah. held towards quad. But A single player can win the round, can either take you to overtime, or your mistake could be the one that costs your team the quarterfinals. Here it comes, Carrigan leaps through the smoke, there's no trade, and stand there as well. EG, they've got some fight left, and with just a 5-7, he's taken two kills, crucial kills at that. A fight for Breezy's one as well. Mouseport completely ripped. They go through the smoke. There's been a few awkward moments for Mouseports and that particular bit of utility. They didn't have to rush that scenario, but there they go, one by one, it all falls apart, and it's going to be a full... Get into the first round of overtime. Voxic will change the pace up completely with the AWP purchase. You can see through the smoke one by one, Alex. I can't tell you why they do that. They got one minute on the clock, and that's the play you make. Oh, I, you know. So their protocols are in place. Let's see if the bullets are in the right one. Easy. No flash either. Completely ready to take another fight, and he catches Frozen on the advance. EG spotless on the defense. There's nothing they can do now. Shell shocked Carrigan and Voxic.
They hold their ground. 19 seconds. There's bullets being thrown at them from every direction. They can't leave. Harrigan leaping through a smoke. Is this classic maneuver? <laughs> it's his favorite move right now, but there it is. It is going to be a very convincing round once again for EG. Mabay and deny the plant. And we'll see the replay of that now. Chris J trying to take the aggro, but falling back effectively. There was no smoke there to deny his vision. They didn't want to telegraph their play at all. Trying to... Put a lot of pressure on the site. Not so much pit, though. And that is where two members do lie. Carrigan's... Oh, wow. Love the moves to get the info safely. Easy makes it clear where he is, and he's going to get caught by the boost. I said they couldn't find Pit from there, and well, Chris J's proven me wrong. Cirque on the site, Ethan behind, and it's working perfectly for EG. Yeah, the old bait and switch there. Cirque takes all the aggro toward the bomb side. They didn't anticipate Ethan's position, but Chris J doing his best is not going to be enough as we go 2 0 there. Cirque, decent effort from Chris J up on the atrium, does find the quick kill towards the pit, but they didn't anticipate the second player there, and he does just enough. You can see everyone focusing towards the bomb side of that stage. 2 0. Money's still absolutely fine. Can be smoked off, we play ahead of it. The other one's likely to fade a bit faster. A second flash from him, but they're coming from long. Who's responsible for that in his absence? I'm not sure. I don't think anyone is at this point. Oh, they're gonna no. be pincered. They've got no chance. They threw the smoke, luckily. Christian Rob's more than happy to oblige there. It looked like the perfect pincer. They waited a few more seconds for the smoke to go down. They would have had all the advantages they could possibly ask for there. They did all the hard work in the opening segments of the round there, but going through the smoke, now Sports will definitely be taking this round. It's a four versus one with Ethan with just six points of health. Now one more bullet will do it. Some impressive shots there, but still, now Sports remain in the game for now. Two to go to get the double overtime. I thought, you know, you forced, forced Woxic off. He, play, he plays it smart, gets ahead of that smoke, but look at this from Tarek. Straight through the smoke, one by one. I feel like that's not the first time we've been saying that. These T sides. They've had them. Again, they concede that long. It worked for them once, will it work again? From Balcony, they drop, he has the info, one. Not sure if he caught a glimpse of the second. Tagging him up nicely, looking for the line, but they can't plant there, they continue to be relatively hesitant. Nice shot from Breezy. Three more on that Balcony and they're staying there. At least two members still on that higher elevation over the smoke, another. Three frags away from EG taking us to a third map. It's looking all too good now. They don't have to rush this, but with 25 seconds, there is a little bit of anxiety about getting into that site. Not anymore. Breezy relieves it all. Chris J's gone. Frozen and Carrigan left to preserve Inferno. You want all the pistols, all the stars aligned, but EG. A hero round from Tarek puts them here. Nine seconds. Hold on. And frozen. Wait. Hang on a second. No, no, no. Hang on a second. He has got the bomb down, but I'm not sure he can get his gun out in time. No. Oh, and he got again. Ladies and gentlemen, no sports. I don't even think they believe it. One by one, they went down. We didn't see the first kill from Frozen, but how did he open things up? And that's where it all started. Carrigan chiming in at the same time as well. The spray, oh. it lands towards Breezy and Tarek. He has to get the bomb down. He's got no choice but to do so. I can't believe that round works out for them. It was all said and done. I'm not sure we're going to finish in one OT here. That this first frag, so crucial. It's a fake towards me, Alex. A full fake. Flashes over from Cirque. Smoke as well. What's the reaction from the CTs? Three are there. Tarek's gonna full commit to this one. He has to try and sell it as best he can. His flames do eliminate from Oh, they're rotating from A. They're falling off completely. Oh, oh it's oh, happening. Look at this. Completely open sight. It's the dream in EG. Could this really be it? I'm not gonna celebrate prematurely. Bomb in, a 4v4, a four-man retake with very limited utility aside from the Dutchman. Chris J has managed to sneak past the lurking orb from Cirque. And he's so distant, he's gonna have to close that gap just in case. The frags come in in the same way they did the round prior. Rob's sure. advancing from the smoke. So could catch Carrigan here, and he does. That's neat, that's tidy. The first for Chris, he needs a second. Rob's in tow, needs to find the quicker to pit. And Woxic left. There is not much time left on that bomb, and two members, Ethan Key can survive just by standing. Completely still, like statues, another bullet. This time connects, and this is gonna go to three. EG, what an endurance battle this was. Well, perhaps it is time for Evil Geniuses to rise above Mouse Sports, but the only time that I've got on my watch is nuke time. I'm ready to get into this last map of the series, the sixth one on the day, and we're going to be doing it with Henry Greer and Alex Richardson. T-star here for Evil Geniuses, and we've got some lobby aggression from Chris J. He'll open things up nicely, wow. a clinical shot towards the squeaky door room, and now, what's the play? What are they going to do with this man disadvantage? It's actually going to be a five versus three. Frozen needs to fall back here, takes a few bullets, but now needs to hold on to the advantage. That advantage is so big, so early. Two bodies dropped with an aggressive three-man push. 
And look what that's done to the rest of them. Sirk's the one that perhaps could be the linchpin to somewhat of a comeback in this, and jumping for info gets it. He's making plenty of noise, but they know there's one holding the rafters. Likely comes as no surprise. Stacked up on top side, Sirk continues to try and take that fight. The swing from Frozen is there, and not winning the fight cleanly. Sirk does get another chance, he gets two. We're back to a 3v3, folks, and 60 seconds on the clock. EG have been gifted a way back in. Is it enough though, Alex? Three on two now, Boxy pulls one back with the P2000. Tarek yet to strike in this round. He makes his way out of the hut. They need to recover that bomb, and it looks like it's a great position from Carrigan here, but close range. A Glock should have come out on top, but he does hold strong. Cirque now already found two kills in the round, takes himself down to eight HP. That's far from ideal. And at this point, it looks like the round might be done. A nice lobby push coming from the CTs here. Cirque would have to find some clinical headshots. I don't think that's going to be delivered at this point. Trying to find $300 if possible. 20 seconds remain, and it's just a matter of time before he goes down here. He knows Chris J's in that position, but at this point, this way he's going to go down. One bullet will do it, and Voxic finds it. And it's going to be $2,000 per player now. And will they force by in the second? Here was the push from Chris J. No one watching the round for him whatsoever. And at that point, forcing them to commit towards outside. So Ooh, frozen shot. shot. Yeah, didn't get to see that the first Last time, thank God we do. Real precise stuff from Frozen. Woxic actually, there's a gap in that smoke, and the second he has a look, he does get tagged down to 30. That could really make it difficult to hold the outside. He's not alone though, and Chris Chase at the moment smoked off. The Astralis smokes, and Chris Chase is going to walk through it. Oh, another Chris Chase smoke push. Yeah, he's doing a lot of that today, isn't he? Hasn't already worked out at all. It's going to be the early advantage for EG on this force. It will be the Krieg to find the opening frag. Damage inflicted towards Voxic as well. He'll have to just cower in towards CT, spawn into Diaxis towards Heaven. Rob's passive as well. A lot of KG setups in the CT setup now sport so far, but that's very impressive from Voxic. Knew he had to get an advantage somewhere, and he does take down Breezy, but Cirque is hot on his heels. It's, it's, this is such a peculiar fight to be happening so early into the round. It's 45 seconds and Cirque playing evasive. Will pop his head up to say hello. And it's a hard shot, but Woxic actually connects. Robs could even finish that. Where's the call? Where's the comms? He would have the line. In fact, I think he did. There it is, finally. Seizing the advantage back. Woxic doing so much after taking early damage. A frag and a dink converted. They do descend to the lower site. Frozen will be receiving them. Great movement for him, though. He spots the information on two of them, rotates towards the bombs, and they've got no idea. That's the bomb denied as well. Ten seconds remaining. He might have done enough here, but even fighting back, this kill might decide the round here, but there we go. It is going to be Mouse Force stabilizing towards the end. Oh, they're likely going to use that disadvantage to try and manufacture the advantage. They'll use Ethan to scout out Secret. And, well, finished off by Rops, can't transfer. It's perfect, their spacing was good, but look at the damage inflicted. My goodness, another frag, but all of them. Great smoke. Hamstrung, and the smoke arrives just as they descend. So they know exactly where EG are now. They've spotted a couple of players down towards Secret. They smoked them out. They've got the man advantage. Sanislaw's low, same story for Cirque as well. Voxic just making sure they're locked in towards that position, but he does. Avert his gaze for a second. Sirk sneaks out. That's the bomb. Nails him. That's such a great shot. He's such a quick sniper. And now, at this point, that should be another frag. Doesn't quite connect, but doesn't have to commit to that one. They've got a massive lead here. He knows he's done enough. Carrigan gonna get caught with nade in his hand. Woxic in the meantime did deal with outside, so this becomes a very difficult clutch. And Woxic got a fourth, I believe. No, three in the round. Christian Robs. They can't apply any more pressure. And this is a chance for Mouseworld to actually build up that reservoir of cash now. The auto shotgun comes in for Carrigan. It's actually, a great, it's actually a great little purchase considering the round that's coming up next. And that's a nice shot for Volta. Really enjoying what he's putting down right now. So precise, so fast. He was presented two targets, and that's like an AWPA's nightmare, yeah. right? You, that, you end up just kind of... If they go towards it, it's very difficult to flush out, but you need a bit of backup to actually bait you in somewhat. Are they going to check this one? We'll see. Chris J up above and he doesn't make a clean kill initially but there's the second. Looking for a third now. Can he find it? He'll drop down and it still is an equal trade. Did a decent job there. Not as... Not as... Uh, Spectacular. Pretty as like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rops. He makes up for it. Quick catch on to Stan. They knew he was coming eventually. Just like that. Carrigan gives him the advantage back. Takes the push. Wanted the info. Rops. Oh my, my God. God. He has got that robotic aim in the game today. Two with that. And a third as well. I don't even think he needed to reload. Damn, son. That was absolutely <laughs> wild from Rops. It looked like that was the access point that around. He was stuck yeah. in the vents. He had to swing out. And somehow has the presence of mind to 
preemptively fire towards that squeaky door position, but he doesn't miss a beat. That's unbelievably good. Here's Rob's kicking off the round here. The AK-47 looking absolutely brutal. What did the third kill look like? Waiting towards that squeaky door position. Bomb down. Oh, there's no one stopping him right now. Yeah, he still had 15 bullets left. He was uh, comfortable. And so am I. He can do a lot here, Tarek. Expecting it, but dealt with. Chris Jake now maneuvering around that smoke. He's gonna. Oh! oh, he's gonna be kept safe. Woxic arrives outside. Now he has his eyes towards Silo, which is where the trade would have come from, but Ethan's forced to cower. Yep. He cannot commit. They've fallen back as well. A perfect approach there. I don't know how Chris Jake survives that one, but Robs. I'm not surprised at that. He continues his domination towards the ramp room. It's going to be a five versus two. Need to keep the money strong here on the CT side. Sure, they've won eight rounds in a row, but the rounds have been contested. Need to keep all five up if they can possibly help it. It will be Ethan still on the silo for now. Dropping down and another oh. shot from Rob's. You cannot enter ramp room. It's not ramp room, it's Rob's room. You can't go near it. He's got the door closed. He's got his edgy stickers on it. <laughs> <laughs> no parents, keep out. Smoke deployed by Robsto, trying to get out of this sticky situation he's found himself in. He's created a wall and Chris Jay's created a mess of Tarek. And will be a reply from Cirque, finally lands a shot, but still with the man advantage is Mouse Sports. A minute on the clock and it looks like a bit of a brawl towards outside. All tactics have been thrown out the window here and the bomb's down towards CT spawn here. How do they possibly recover this and then go and plan as well? It just, I mean, this round looks lost. Chris J, he's the one to find the frags, but it was him and Rops in tandem that worked so well. Good okay. frag from Breezy, there we go. A stabilization, but with 35 seconds, they have, there has to be some improvisation. Stan will be out to retrieve that bomb with the additional frag of Cirque. But with 25 seconds, what's the call? Breezy pushed up nicely here, he can catch Woxic, but it does seem like he's got his eye pressed to the scope, and timing could favor him. It certainly doesn't favor EG at this point in time. Look at that, 15 seconds, no access to the top site. Breezy is in hut. Sick. Has the frag and the bomb. It's not going to oh! go. Down. Oh, he makes it look like a shotgun. Five seconds. There's nothing Cirque can do. No. Another round for Mouse and Wopsick. How does he use that orb so effectively? Any range, any opponent. Were managing to take the lead, both Train and Inferno, but 91%. If my eyes don't deceive me, let's see that from Wopsick. This we second frag. You can see the scramble from Stanislaw there. He's got to make. This looks promising for EG. He's going to get caught with an aid in his hands, and Carrigan does go down. Advantage to EG. One of the few opening kills, but look what follows. Three in quick succession as they descend into ramp. From behind, they look to strike. Tarek and Stan make it just Stan. He's the last man. Bomb available, but no frags for him. Mouse Sports, 13 to 0. They are sprinting towards the finish line. No plan once again. He is allowed to escape. Tarek didn't pull the trigger. Now descending fast on the hunt. And already burning Tarek down, one for one. They just want to stop that 16-0. For now, this is just for pride. EG, they do descend to the lower site. Frozen will be flashed off, and so the bomb and the players are all in the right place, but it comes down to the frags, and that's been always favoring Mouse. It continues to do so. Oh! Another one. Frozen, as the door opens, and it seems like Mouse, they're going to close it for EG. Cirque's gone to 15-0. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not see this every day. Mount Sports just need one. I haven't cast a 15-0 in some time, especially at this level as well. On the big stage, you just don't expect it. After EG, the resurgence on Inferno, you thought they would be coming in here all guns blazing, but now one round separates them from elimination for the tournament. Whoa. Carrigan sneaks down the vents. They've got ramp control as well. Everything looking good for Mount Sports. EG, have they just given up? Have they even got anyone towards lower at this point? Just one player, that's Stan. It doesn't look like it at all. Access to the lower site, that's a dream. The bomb yet to be planted oh, no. now. <laughs> not Corrected. Like not like this. Still no blood drawn. The duel, not going to be won, but Cirque does draw blood first. EG, another frag, another chance. Just three remain to stop that 16 over. Oh, wants it, wants it. Oh, the frozen. Surely not the like this. They're defusing. No, they're not. Cirque stop it. And Mars have done it. 16 to 0. 16 rounds of play goes the way of the North Americans. Exceptional from the international roster. All five players looked like they were peaking to the absolute best of their ability at that point. I've never seen anything like it. Every position was shut down. You can't really focus on the negatives here, Breach. You want to really just focus on the absolute positives. Everyone looking like they were unstoppable on the mouseboard side.